former Minister of St. Ange, thank you very much for taking the time to meet with us today. Thank you. The Seychelles, as a beautiful paradise in the Indian Ocean, competes with many other island nations across the world. So in that context, what would you say are Seychelles' biggest advantages and uh, what are the biggest challenges? I think firstly, no tourism destination are competing. They complement each other. Because when you get the tourism kick to grow, everybody benefits. The more there are interesting destinations, the more there are different destinations or destinations that are diversifying the concept of tourism, the more people will travel. And when people travel, everybody will get a trickling effect and get more people into their own uh, destination. But Seychelles has a key card, a key card to play. It has played it, it continues to play, and it will keep on playing. And this is, we are not after mass tourism. We are a destination that looks for personalized tourism, where we don't look for charter companies, but we more want people to be themselves. With this in mind, when you come to Seychelles, it is a place where you are treated as a person, with respect. And we are not there to just call you room 781 or 942. We want you to feel that you are special. If you find Duke and Duchesses, Prince and Princesses or stars come to Seychelles, it is because of this, where they are themselves, they are unique, and they, f they find that in Seychelles, they can truly enjoy something special. Nevertheless, the tourism sector accounts for 60% of the economy here, directly and indirectly. It's a sector that, because of your positioning as not looking after mass tourism, and because of uh, the size of the country, has a number of challenges. So what would you say are the main challenges facing the sectors, and what are the opportunities more moving forward? Well, Seychelles has been able to navigate through its policy, strict policy of sustainable tourism. What we do today must be there tomorrow and must be there in five years and in 10 years. So we need to protect, at the same time use the same assets to attract people. So it is a very fine line of navigation. But Seychelles, we've been able to do it because even in the days that we were a British colony, we did not call it in those days sustainable tourism or green tourism or eco-tourism. They were simply called conservation. We wanted to protect what we had so that we are seen as good custodians of what we have been blessed with. So with this in mind, we know full well that there is a limit to the number of tourists we can have. Today we receive in the country over three times the total population. This is big. But for us to continue to grow and for us to continue to ensure that tourism remains the pillar of the economy, we need to find ways to increase the yield, but at the same time ensure that the people of Seychelles find themselves in this industry. We cannot have an industry of big businesses where the people themselves are not involved. So this is why a few years ago the government made a, a strong appeal for the Seychellois people to claim back their industry, which means that they can also be involved as small businesses, as entrepreneurs, as people that will help government to protect and to consolidate the industry. I'm going to get to uh, the, the point of uh, the impact on the people in a little bit, but, but first of all, location is a major factor. The closest country to Seychelles is a thousand miles away. When you look at other island nations, the Caribbean has easy access from North America. Southeast Asia has easy access from China and from Australia. So in that context, how do you market your destination? How do you bring tourists to your shores specifically? When I was a tourism officer in the tourism board many years ago, we called it unique by a thousand miles because we were a thousand miles from anywhere. But Seychelles needs to keep on telling the world, the discerning traveler, that we are unique. You need to discover us. There are two groups of people that travel the world. Those that have never been to Seychelles and those that have been to Seychelles. And those that have been our unique group that know they've discovered something special. I think we will never be able to compete with the Caribbean with numbers of tourists that they get. But we are not after this. We are after a group of people that want to make this trip to find a unique group of islands that are granitic in the middle of an ocean, that have coral islands and granitic islands, that are totally preserved because of where it sits, virtually on the equator, 
So we know that we have unique selling points, these key USPs that nobody else has, and a culture, a culture that is so unique because we come from five branches, uh, France, Africa, Great Britain, China, and India. And today the five have been so well blended that they've become a melting pot of cultures with food, with music, with dancing, and with this natural feeling that makes people feel at home. As CEO of Seychelles Tourism Board, you had a hand in developing the 2011 to 2020 Seychelles Sustainable Tourism Strategy. That's something that you've been implementing as tourism minister from 2012 to very recently. Can you walk us through the different, um, how tourism has changed since you took office as tourism minister in 2012 to now? Well, we made a giant leap forward. It is very clear. Tourism has always been a key pillar of the economy of Seychelles. But tourism has never taken the big leap that it has recently. And it's done that because we needed, in our master plan, to ensure that connectivity, air connectivity to Seychelles, was so important, so we went after it. Today we are served as never before. We can have one stop to anywhere in the world. But we also knew, as small islands in the middle of an ocean, we needed to look after the cruise ship business to ensure that access to this type of tourism was possible. And we used this in that era as if we were at a tourism trade fair where these passengers will land for six hours, eight hours, or a day, and we ensure that they have a brochure, they get a taste of Seychelles so they can come back on holiday or advise their friends and relatives to come back to Seychelles. With this in mind, visibility was important for Seychelles. If we wanted to grow, we needed visibility. And visibility remained the key driver that give, gave us the success it did. So it was an open door policy with the press, it was working with tourism trade fairs, it was being seen with two operators and supporting our partners, which are two operators all over the world. The big difference that we've done, we had the courage a few years ago, about four years ago, to make a moratorium on the construction of big hotels. And that was very courageous of us. As a small group of islands, depending on tourism, we were still able to put a moratorium in place. What we wanted to do is ensure that everything else was in order before we allow more hotels to be built. That went into training, training of our young people so that they can tomorrow replace people in the industry. We looked at the airline access. We also looked at infrastructure of the country because the big question that we asked in this master plan, what is tourism for Seychelles? Is it the hotel? Is it the airline? Is it the destination management companies? No, it is the destination as a whole, it is the country. If it is a country, we needed to look at the roads, the sewage, we needed to look at the water, the infrastructure. So today we know where we stand and we know where we can still pitch a hotel if we want one and also ensure that the people, the people of Seychelles, gets a benefit out of it. About the sustainable tourism strategy, which you also have the Seychelles Sustainable Tourism label, one of the things that we think about, the first thing that we think about when we talk about sustainability is environmental protection, which you have a strong positioning in. What are the policies in place at the moment when it comes to environmental protection and can they still be improved further? Totally. I mean, we have very strict guidelines for environment protection in Seychelles. Every project will have a, uh, an EIA, impact, Environment Impact Assessment, done to ensure that there is no impact on the environment. But this is also publicized, and the people are allowed and encouraged to come out and air their views if it's going to affect them directly. But more than this, I think the navigating in tourism and the tourism development, we need to ensure that as we protect, we can also develop. And this is that fine line that gives us an edge when it is successful and can become a disaster if we fail. Up to today, we've succeeded very well. Seychelles has 52% of its land area dedicated or declared national parks where no development whatsoever takes place. Again, because as a Seychellois and as a people of Seychelles, we've been conscious that what we have, we need to protect if we want tourism to continue. In the schools, you will find wildlife clubs to ensure that people, and from the younger age possible, also adopt 
and then promote the concept of uh, protecting what is ours, the unique birds that we have, these endemic birds that Seychelles has, turtles that are still coming up in public places to lay an egg, and then you find baby turtles walking down. We have so much that is unique to this country, and it is the people that will protect it. It is not laws. The laws are there as guidelines. But when the people are on board and the people grab it, we will have sustainable tourism for the long term. And this is what Seychelles has been after. Another plank of the sustainable tourism label is economic empowerment. It's also cultural preservation or cultural integration. So that has a lot to do with the people of Seychelles. How has the development of tourism, the massive development over the past few years, affected the population? How has it affected their standard of living? And um, how has it impacted the culture? You see, Seychelles tourism is so important for its economy. When our key source markets, the tourism source markets, where we get our tourists from, when they sneeze, we catch asthma immediately. And we all walk around with a mask and gasping for air because we are so dependent on tourism. How has tourism affected the people? It has given them a better life. It is quite clear. Tourism is the one industry worldwide that can still put money in the pockets of its people. But for you to do that, you need to have a policy in place where the people find themselves in it, which is why in Seychelles, this famous phrase of claim back your industry, it is yours. Be involved in it, work in it yourselves, and then you will help the government to consolidate it and to help it grow. I think Seychelles have been lucky. Today you find so many small businesses of two rooms to ten rooms that are just the small, ordinary Seychellois. Of course, a lot of people complained when we brought out this regulation. The big businesses found that as a distraction. But in the long term, this will help Seychelles because you will find that you don't have them, the big businesses, and us, the locals. We will all be together in the one industry that is very much a people's industry, tourism. So about culture, Seychelles has a, a strong history of pirates in the region. Is that an area of cultural tourism that you're interested in developing in Seychelles? Or do you think that, are you perhaps afraid, speaking of cultural preservation and cultural integration, that you would perhaps cheapen or commodify that aspect of your culture? You know, there's no tourism without culture. The natural beauty is one thing, but the souvenirs that you go back with is the interaction of people. And when you talk about people, it is culture, because there's no culture without people. I think it is so important, which the President of the Republic, a few years ago, when he created the new Ministry of Tourism and Culture at the time, he plunked the two together because he wanted culture to be the base of tourism and tourism to help protect our culture. This is why today more and more emphasis has been put on the local food so that people can taste something that is so different because of the diversity that we are. We've put emphasis on trying to get hotels to have a musician, to have paintings in the room that reflect the culture of the country. I think the UNWTO and UNESCO together staged a meeting in Cambodia a few years ago where the, the outcome of it was very clear. Use tourism to consolidate your culture and use culture to give a good base to your tourism industry. And Seychelles has followed it from that day and today we are happy to see that the people are involved, we are not shy of our culture, we say proudly that we are Seychellois, and that we are not ashamed at all for us to be able to tell you, enjoy something that comes from Seychelles, it is part of our culture. You mentioned the moratorium on new hotels being built in the country. Of course, carrying capacity is a major concern for small island nations when it comes to the number of tourists that you can bring to your shores. How can that sec the tourism sector continue to grow without necessarily bringing more tourists in? And um, how can you continue to increase your revenue without affecting the environment? Yield, the key word is yield. You have to increase the yield. But to increase the yield, you need to have a, a point in the arrival numbers that will enhance what you have so that people can grow their own small properties, get them to a better level so that they can command a better yield or a better rate, a room rate. But for you to do that, you need to take it in stages. You can't overnight come in and say, we will not have anything anymore. We're going to stick to what we are, because we will also 
bring the level of what our hotels are to a lesser level. Seychelles is probably lucky to have most of the better brands of hotels in the country. And they are brands that one attracts the other. And every week we have a, a demand for a new property. But we've been able to say, we will take it in phases, we will take it one after the other, we will not be rushed into it. To ensure that the Seychelles remains what it is, the carrying capacity that was just finished in December, in December 2016, stated very clearly that some parts of the island we will not have any more hotels, like north of Mai. We will won't have any more hotels because there, if you grow the hotel number, the people will find themselves disaffected. The beaches that they themselves enjoy on a Sunday for a picnic with their family will disappear and you'll have hotel after hotel. We've also seen in that study that we cannot have a beach beds being rented on all the beaches of Seychelles because that'll turn us into one of these countries where you run in the morning, you block a beach bed, you put in your towel and then you run into the sea. It is not Seychelles. Seychelles needs to be more personalized. So you will not have, unless you are sitting in a hotel and on the beach just in front of that hotel, you won't see beach beds in our country. The, these are things that have come out of that carrying capacity. And we maintain, we maintain with strict uh, regulations that we monitor the water, the, the, the water saturation to ensure that even the offflows from the mountains are not just endangering the water composition of the water so that the salinity remains, that protects the reefs. When you protect the reefs, you have fish, you can enjoy snorkeling or diving. All these things, there are studies and there are experts. And we had to call for people to come in from Europe that helped us do the study. And today, the, the minister in place will ensure that the study is implemented for the benefit of Seychelles. You've recently left your position of Minister of Tourism to run for the Office of Secretary General of UNWTO, the World Trade uh, Tourism Organization. Um, one major point, or an important point at least, in your platform to run for Secretary General is the emphasis on access to tourism both as tourists and as employees of handicapped people. What is in place at the moment in Seychelles in that, in that regard? Well, Seychelles prides itself that we go for one word, and that is called respect. And if I make it as Secretary General of the UNWTO, it'll be the same line of respect that we need to take with us. When you respect somebody for a disability that we prefer to call them the handy able instead of disabled, because they have their own strengths and they have their own qualities, and we need to respect it and find a place for them to travel, but also for them to work in the industry. But the same line goes for every other grouping. I was in Berlin for ITB when there was the International Women's Day. And Berlin celebrated this day with a lot of pomp and ceremony. But is it today still the time for us to have these sections or groups? Or should we say we respect humanity by respecting people? LGBT groups, the young, the, the women, the disabled, men ourselves. We need just to respect people. Once we've done this, we will find that peace can be at the, at the door of every country because respecting people, you will respect their own behavior, you respect their color, their ethnicity, you respect their politics, their religion, and their sexual behavior because this is them. It's something personal to them and the world and the UNWTO must lead the way to say we respect people. You handed off the reins to your successor at the Ministry of Tourism, Minister Lusto Lalan. In your, your uh, master plan for 2020 and beyond, what is left to accomplish to reach your long-term vision for the country? Oh, there's a lot. Tourism you will never finish because it is something that evol evolves. And the day you stay stagnant, you will go backwards and you will not progress. I think uh, the new minister has still to work with the trade to ensure that raising the level of the property itself will command a, be a better income, a better yield from the industry. Offer more activities for our tourists. We'll have the tourists to spend. That'll again increase the yield. We need more activities. On a bad day, 
let's say a cloudy day, we need to find new things for people to do. But at the end, we still have to work on the future. We will have new hotels. When there are new hotels, we will need to ensure that air access is there, not just from the hubs, but also from key source markets. As I say, Charles is today flying to Paris and now to Dusseldorf. These are straight point-to-point -point air access from key source markets. This we need to continue if we want to uh, progress with our industry and give us total success in what we are doing. If elected, you will be the first African Secretary General of the UNWTO. What sets you apart from your competitors in the race for that position? I will never speak about my competitors. I always speak about what I will do. I think what is very clear today is I'm a man from tourism. I grew up in the world of tourism in a country that tourism is the pillar of its economy. I studied hotel management, then tourism management and marketing and sales. With this background, I entered the private sector for the big part of my working uh, life. Until I became minister, I was a man from the private sector running hotels, running uh, tourism uh, establishments, and also involved in the two operating side for quite a while. So I have a good bagage of understanding tourism, of having lived tourism in a country that depends on tourism. I am also anglophone and francophone, so I speak English and French. And having studied in Germany, I also speak German. I have a big, I believe, uh, asset in coming from a country where diversity of its people ensures that we don't look at people by color, religion, or politics. We look at people as people and we respect everybody. The success of the new Secretary General will be to be able to attract countries that are not members to work with us. And for this, you need somebody who the world respects as a country that is like Seychelles, friends of all and enemies of none. So you are able to, to appeal to everybody, let us sit together around a table. Instead of just looking at politics, let us use the assets and the strong points of the country through a back door and this one is an economic one, tourism. I think that's a nice conclusion to the interview. Thank you very much.